Many garden centres, big box DIY stores and even some supermarkets will sell low quality, inexpensive bonsai trees. What Harry Harrington calls Molesai. These often come with no growing instructions, or worse still, sold incorrectly as indoor trees. Understand, there's no such thing as an indoor tree. Trees are outdoor growing plants that need abundant light, water and air in order to thrive. If a tree is not native to your local environment, then it may need some winter protection, maybe in a greenhouse, conservatory or a porch through the worst of the winter months. The exception to this is tropical trees, which grow in hot, humid environments like ficus. These will need keeping in an appropriate environment that best mirrors their natural habitat. Many people buy juniper or Chinese elm bonsai and keep them in an unsuitable indoor area. Over time, the tree slows down turns brown, withers and dies. Because these plants naturally live outdoors and need exposure to changing seasons to trigger dormancy. Without this, they slowly lose vigor and eventually die. Junipers in particular are hardy outdoor trees that naturally grow in arid desert regions and mountains and are quite capable of withstanding extremes of heat and cold. So do yourself a favor and put that juniper bonsai tree outside. For many people, their introduction to bonsai will be through a seed kit like this. This is a shame as it's not a great way to get started with bonsai. First, there's no such thing as bonsai seeds only tree seeds which might be grown and in time cultivated to become bonsai. There's nothing special about the seeds, they're not dwarf varieties and if planted into the ground would result in normal full-size trees. Second, growing any tree from seed is a very long, time-consuming process which for many inexperienced growers will result in disappointment and disillusion. If the seeds are viable and they germinate and they grew, they could well take five to 10 years to become suitable for starting to shape and cultivate for bonsai. You'll be better to get a five year head start and buy a nursery plant to style. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's not worthwhile growing and cultivating trees from seeds. It absolutely is. There's a Greek proverb that says that a society grows great when old men plant trees in whose shade they know they will never sit. But understand it will take years and you'd be better to do this alongside having other trees to work on. My advice, go buy yourself a nice inexpensive little Chinese elm and forget the bonsai seed kits. Proper care for your bonsai tree is highly dependent on knowing exactly what kind of tree you have. It's not enough to know that you have a bonsai tree. Unless you know exactly what it is, you cannot hope to look after it. Is it an indoor tree or an outdoor tree? What kind of soil does it prefer and how much watering? There are plenty of plant identification apps, online forums, websites, and local groups, it can help you to identify your tree. So as the very first step, it is absolutely imperative on you to know exactly what your tree is, so you can look after it correctly, provide for its specific needs and keep it alive. Once you've identified what your bonsai tree is, I would suggest that your next step should be to fully research the proper care for your tree. Websites like Bonsai Empire and Before Me 
provide great resources and detailed care guides for a wide variety of popular bonsai species. These guides will help you immensely when it comes to positioning your tree, its preferred habitat, growth habits, pruning and fertilizing needs, and any quirks or care requirements specific to that particular plant. Despite their best endeavors, many will find that their cherished tree dies, perhaps through inexperience and improper care. Don't be discouraged or disheartened. Even the most experienced bonsai master has killed a few trees. Learn from your experience and mistakes. Understand why your trees died and try again. I like to joke that if you haven't killed at least 10 trees, then you're not even trying hard enough. With experimentation and pushing the boundaries comes knowledge and experience of what works and what doesn't. So don't be embarrassed by your failure. See it as an opportunity to grow and to improve. Hello and welcome to the Bonsai Garage. And today I'm going to be working on this lovely little Kojo no Mai Fuji Cherry. So I've got all my kit with me. I've got my scissors, uh, I've got some little pruners, my wire cutters and some more shears and so let's get started so if I have a look at the tree just need to take that branch off there I found that quite often in bonsai, being bold leads to more dramatic results. So don't be timid with your trees. So when you're pruning, for example, branches will grow back. So you don't need to be scared. Here's an example of a Picea, where I put a really quite dramatic bend into the trunk. These have a natural habit of growing straight, but you can see that by putting a guy wire over the top here, I brought that trunk right down. And so it's got a much lower growing shape, which is quite dramatic. And I'm really quite pleased with how that looked. This is the tree that I refer to as my hornbeam stumpy. And initially this tree started as a six or seven foot tall tree and it had the same thickness of trunk all the way up. So what I did was I chopped off all of the upper growth and was left with this section that was perhaps eight inches long. And I've regrown all of the branches on here over the last two seasons. And what I will end up with is a tree which has got quite pronounced taper in it and all the branches I've been able to decide where those are growing and to position those with wire. So again, don't be afraid of your trees, let them know who's boss. I often see people asking questions about repotting their bonsai tree on social media forums. When challenged, they don't seem to quite know why or when they're repotting, only that this is what you do with bonsai trees. That is not quite true. Bonsai is a fusion of artistry and horticultural practices to grow and shape an idealized image or interpretation of a tree. But the health and care of the tree should always come first. So, never perform any activity on your bonsai tree 
until and unless you understand what you're doing and why. There is cause and effect. Understand the process you're carrying out and what you're intending to achieve. Some processes, like repotting, are best carried out at specific times of the year. Understanding this for your specific plant and species will benefit the health and well-being of your tree. In addition to sunlight and air, water is one of the critical requirements for bonsai trees and it is important to get your watering regime right. A bonsai tree is as likely to die from overwatering as it is from underwatering, though if you have a free draining soil that will help prevent the water from pooling and causing root rot. It is often said that a bonsai apprentice will spend his first year as an apprentice simply learning how to water the trees in his care. There is a saying that for bonsai it rains twice. This is a mantra that I repeat when watering my own bonsai trees. I give them an initial watering, then return for a second watering after about 10 minutes, which allows for the water to fully percolate through the pot. The watering needs of each of your trees will be different depending on species, your local climate and your planting medium or soil. You need to become attuned to your trees to be sure to provide the correct level of watering when it is needed. Japanese maples do not like their roots too wet. Other trees are more thirsty like dawn redwoods and keeping them on a drip tray will help increase humidity and prevent them from drying out. Tiny mame trees in much smaller pots are also at risk of drying out more quickly and need extra care and attention. There are two approaches to growing and shaping bonsai. The first is clip and grow method, where the growth and direction of shoots and branches is dictated by selective pruning. The second is through wiring to manage and redirect the growth. As new shoots and branches lignify and harden, they're set into the desired place. If you are going to wire, then learn how to do it correctly and use the correct materials. Your wire should be correct to gauge strong enough to hold the trunk and branches in place. It should be regular and tidy and not look like some botched bondage experiment. There are some great online resources and videos on wiring, such as the Mirai Beginner Series. Check them out to learn the best practices and then learn and improve by hands-on application. And be sure to regularly check and remove the wire from your trees before it begins to bite into the bark and leave unsightly scarring that may take a long time to heal. Many people myself included, are guilty of rushing young plants into a bonsai pot too soon. By doing so, we slow down the development of the plant significantly, making it a much harder process to develop that mature aged tree look that we're aiming for. With bonsai, we follow a process. It begins with creating a thick, mature-looking trunk. 
Often this is achieved by growing a tree in a basket or in the ground for a number of years. Do we then consider primary branch growth? Often branches can be grown or regrown in just a couple of years. From these primary branches, our secondary growth is developed as we strive to increase ramification and twigginess. Remember that bonsai is a marathon and not a sprint. To create a mature looking specimen tree takes years of planning, growing and refinement. To learn anything to a high standard, you have to immerse yourself and absorb as much knowledge and information as possible and put that into practice. Unlike 20 or 30 years ago, when resources and knowledge were scarce, there is now an immense wealth of information in all forms of videos and books and covering all aspects of the hobby. Check them out. Watch and study as much as you can. Read voraciously about techniques, about aesthetics, about pots, about tree biology, everything and anything. Even if not directly and specifically bonsai related, you'll increase your appreciation and understanding and your bonsai will ultimately benefit as a result. I see a lot of very heated discussions in forums about bonsai soil. It seems that if you ask 10 bonsai enthusiasts about bonsai soil, you will get 11 answers. In all honesty, there's no single best bonsai soil mix. It depends greatly on a variety of factors, such as your local climate, your availability for watering, the types and species of your trees, and also your budget. And of course, in nature, trees grow quite happily in a wide variety of soils. Fundamentally, any soil mix needs to provide three important factors for your trees. It needs to be free draining, so whilst holding tiny pockets of water, the excess water will also run off. It needs to provide access to air, so a more gritty, granular soil is preferable. It needs to provide nutrients for the plant, so if your soil is inert and inorganic, then you will need to provide this via fertilizers and feeds. You can mix a range of products into your bonsai soil, such as compost, pine bark, acadama, molar clay, pumice, lava rock, perlite, agricultural grit or sand. Just be sure to understand the properties of what you're adding and what it brings to your soil mix. As long as you're satisfying the horticultural requirements, you should be good. It might be stating the obvious, but bonsai is not new. There are people who have spent multiple decades growing and developing trees, learning and refining their knowledge, techniques and experience. They've made the mistakes and learned from them, and they can help guide you and prevent you from making those same mistakes if you're willing to listen. In every group or online forum, there are those who have travelled the road before you, You'd be foolish as a beginner to ignore or dismiss their well-meaning advice or opinions. I see this repeatedly on Facebook and other social media groups. You ignore the advice of someone with 40 more years experience than you at your peril and you look foolish and naive.
If the intention of Bonsai is to create a stylized image of a perfect tree in miniature, then it makes sense that the obvious source of inspiration is in nature. So it makes sense to spend as much time as you can around trees and woodland. As well as the benefits for your mental health and physical well-being, it will act as a great source of inspiration for your bonsai creations. But seriously, trust me on the juniper bonsai. <laughs> <laughs>